800-951-0592-2035. Uh, fireworks probably not coming till later this afternoon. Uh, we, we have, I've got a couple of opportunities here. The silver is simple. Quarters and dimes, rolls of dimes, rolls of quarters, silver quarters. These are pre-1965. This is great barter stuff. Uh, you think digital currency, which I'm now convinced this is coming much faster than I want it to. Much, much faster uh, than I want it to. This situation here with these banks, it's just not good. And unfortunately, you know, think about it this way. You used to be able, okay, well, commercial real estate's bad. Okay, but don't worry. If we do have a run of deposits, we'll sell treasuries. We'll sell treasuries, and it'll be fine. But they're in this situation now. These banks are in this situation where they don't have a good option to sell because the treasuries are underwater. The commercial real estate is underwater. And for a lot of these banks, well, we, we took a few risks. And uh, those risky things are, are underwater, right? They, they don't have, there's, not, there's nowhere for them to go. And this is why you hear a guy like Kaplan saying, man, one more rate hike isn't worth it. It really is, it's just not worth it. Because it actually makes the problem uh, that much worse. So this is what we have going on. And I think, I hate to say it, but almost by design here, this, they want a digital currency, period. And they're going to get it, and they're going to use this as the, a crisis like this to get that to happen. So uh, when you talk barterable material, uh, these rolls of silver quarters and, and silver dimes, it, that, that's great barterable material because you know with the digital currency, hey, they can tell us what to buy and how much we can buy. Hey, you're, you're only allowed uh, one box of 223 ammo. You want more? Well... Uh, Somebody willing to trade you for it, right? Hey, you're only allowed uh, X amount of, of, of red meat today. You're, you're allowed only X amount of gasoline, or you're only allowed to, to have your AC uh, at, at, at this temperature uh, because otherwise you got to pay extra or there's fees involved. Uh, so getting barterable material, I think, is key right now. Rolls of silver quarters at $270. That's $10 face value. That's 40 silver quarters. Uh, 50 silver dimes. That's a $5 face value roll at $135. Uh, you know that I love platinum right now. Platinum was over $1,100 uh, last week. It's sold off here. It's down. Let's buy again right now. I've got Platinum Eagles. These are going to be backdate Platinum uh, platinum Eagles, U.S. Platinum Eagles at $1,335. If you want Platinum Bars, you save 100 bucks, $1,235. And, again, you guys know uh, we've made a big call on Platinum for this year, uh, we think it's going to be a great performer. And then on the gold side, it's still all about $10 liberties right now. Uh, another you know, $12 uh, hike here. I'm keeping yesterday's price, $1,225. Everybody today, I'm going to throw a caveat. I have to. After the Fed makes their announcement, if we see gold and silver, platinum skyrocket, right? We're going to have to charge you more. So th this is th these prices are good till the Fed announcement, and they may still be good after the Fed announcement. But I, I, I you know, you got one of these feelings that that uh, we could see even higher prices after the Fed announcement. We'll see how it goes, Jason. Yeah, a couple things about the digital currency. Uh, that's coming. Uh, one about the speed in which they can put it into place. I think, I think the uh, the infrastructure is being put into place at a, a, a ravenous pace. You know, so I, I think the infrastructure is, is going in. That's that's what that's the only reason we don't have it now. As far as once they click it on and put it into place, it, it may be something where it comes in a little slower, where they slowly end regular dollars and then they they do Fed dollars. 
But uh, all it took was uh, 9-11, Joe. And uh, now getting on the airport, on an airplane at the airport, is completely a different world. It's seemingly happened overnight, right? It's been there forever. So, so that's one thing. And, Joe, the, the amounts of things that can happen after the digital currency is in place are endless. You know, here's one that we haven't really talked about. Uh, they can limit who puts money into your account. Think about this. You go to sell property, I don't know, a garage sale, right? And, uh, well, for whatever reason, Jason, uh, we're not going to allow various suspicious individuals to put money into your account, or we're not allowing anybody to put their money into your account. They have to put it into a, a, a Jason-approved account before we put it into your account. I mean, there's so many nefarious things about controlling how the money moves, Joe, that think about that. You can get money from local people for, for your garage sale, but they have to go to this, this Jason safety box where we, just, we determine how safe this money is before we, uh, we actually allow it into your account. I mean, just right, Joe? Oh, one yeah, of the guys that came to your uh, garage sale, he was not a good guy, and, and his money doesn't count, so uh, you, you will not be receiving that. It's endless, right? You so know, it's endless how much control there is. It's so much so. And, and I think one of the things, that, and again, go back to how we started the segment with, hey, the banks are in a really bad spot here. Because in the past, hey, if commercial real estate wasn't bad, right, you sold treasuries. If treasuries weren't good, you sold. Now they're all losers. And one of the things that they can do now with a digital currency is, hey, you know what? We don't have to bring rates to zero again for real estate, right? We don't have to bring rates to zero for the uh, interest payments on our debt. Now we can just bring your bank account into a negative rate. Because really, what is when, when the Fed is going to zero, what are they trying to do? They're trying to get us to spend money. That's what they're trying to do, right? They want you to go out, uh, buy that boat, buy that car, buy that house. Well, with a digital currency, now think about the power. You know what? We're going to have rates at 5%. But uh, starting uh, May 1st, your, your money in your Fed account uh, is now going to uh, have a negative 1% rate. Every month you're going to take 1% out of that bank, right? Another word, and, and, and they'll probably do it like this. Hey, any amount over, and whatever that, hey, anything over $10,000 in your Fed account, uh, we're now going to start charging you for leaving it here, right? Uh, these are things that they can do with this digital currency. It's, it, it really is a, a scary situation. 800-951-0592. Joe and Jason, we're coming right back. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Once again, because uh, we've got a few of them here. Uh, so, platinum. Let's start with the other white metal, platinum, backdated platinum U.S. Eagles, 1335. Uh, these are one ounce, uh, one ounce platinum bars, 1235. Silver, rolls of silver quarters at 270. Rolls of silver dimes at 135. And then on the gold side, uh, this one's an easy one. U.S. $10 liberties at $1,225 at 800-951-0592. Uh, Stan Drunken Miller was out again. And again, this is a guy you have to listen to. Why? Well, because this is where all the billionaires have their money, period. Uh, when you talk about debt markets, no one knows more than this guy. And, and he said... Hey, I hate to tell everybody, but the real elephant in the room, the unchecked future government spending, Americans' gargantuan runaway debt, fiscal recklessness over the last decade 
has been like watching a horror movie unfold. And it really is. People have no idea. Jason, that's why they listen to us. We, 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 we've told you, listen, they, we've got a $40 trillion deficit between the national debt, which we don't even know what it is right now because of the debt ceiling, but we know it's $32 trillion. Plus the Fed's balance sheet, right? That's what, $8.5 trillion, right? That's $40 trillion. But think about what it was 20 years ago. What's it, $5 trillion? Not even? $4 trillion and change? $5 trillion 20 years ago? Here's the problem, though, and Stan knows this. That's not all the debt they created. Oh, no, no. Right? We, we, we learned 12 years after the fact, because the, the, the Federal Reserve were supposed to, through um, Freedom of Information Act, two years after the fact, the Fed is supposed to tell us the actual truth about, okay, well, how much money did you really spend? They went to the Supreme Court and got the Supreme Court to agree with them that, hey, if we tell everybody in 2012 what we actually spent in 08, 09, and 2010, that would cause a huge panic, and we, 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 uh, we can't tell people. So the Supreme Court said, okay, we'll give you 10 more years. And then we found out in 2022, the Federal Reserve actually spent like $29 trillion. It was, it was outrageous how much money they actually spent. And, and, and Stan looks at this. He goes, it is so much worse talking about the debt than I ever imagined. And he goes, the real number, he goes, it's not $32 trillion, It's not $40 trillion. He goes, it's really $200 trillion. But, but again, hey, I don't want to scare you. He goes, here's the problem today. He goes, it's like me sitting on the beach in Santa Monica. And I'm worrying that will this 30-foot wave that's coming damage the pier when I know a 200-foot tsunami is 10 minutes out. And that's kind of what he's saying is happening today. Everybody's worrying about if this 30-foot wave is going to damage the pier, Jason. But 10 minutes from now, the tsunami's coming. And I don't know if his 10 minutes means 10 years. Uh, I, I don't know. But it certainly seems like he's saying, hey, the tsunami, it's a lot closer than everybody thinks. That's a pretty good analogy. Yeah, that's, you know, and, and you've said it many times, uh, a little bit at a time and then all at once. That's, I guess, you know, if you're, if you're looking at a tsunami, if you can, if you can look under the horizon and, and see it coming before the other people, most people probably aren't looking all the way to the edge of the ocean and seeing it. But if you see it first, right, you, you get the first chance to run, I guess, right? Well, so, listen, he's made uh, no bones about how he thinks Jay Powell is, is really – uh, been the patsy that I, I've said that he has been. And, and I'll just tell you this, and it's funny, they're starting to all say this now. Remember what Kaplan said about these banks owning all these treasuries. Unfortunately, by still owning large amounts of government debt, the, the Fed continues to create a false illusion that it can help with our uh, financial problems. And, and this is the problem, Jason. They can't help it at all. They've caused the financial problem, plain and simple. And you better have it. I, I, I wish there was another way. You, you, you don't have gold and silver put away. You're going to look back and, and regret not doing it because this is really a simple problem. It's a very simple problem, yeah, Joe. It's, and here's the thing is, is uh, it's... If you look at the history of it, if you look at economic history at all, and just the short-term history, it's just slowly gotten worse, especially since the turn of the century. It's just worse and worse and worse. I mean, uh, the before 9-11 world versus the after 9-11 world, Joe, is just completely different. You know, the dot-com crash and the housing crash and the the, the coronavirus crash and, the, and this thing that's coming. You know, I, I've said it – I used to say it a lot when I first joined Patriot in 2018 – one of the major reasons I jumped at the opportunity is because I knew the next emergency was coming. I don't know if you remember me saying that, Joe, in 2018, 2019. Like the, the next emergency is coming. I said I didn't know what it was. I didn't predict. I didn't predict a pandemic, 
But the next emergency is coming, and it's always some emergency that they make either bigger than what it really is, or it's completely false, at, completely. And so, uh, it's coming. Another one's coming. Whatever, whatever's how you know, whatever economic crash is heading our way, Joe. There's going to be some other worldly emergency that'll accompany it, so they can point the finger at that, Joe. It's coming. Yeah, I hate to say it. It's usually a three-letter word: war. 800-951-0592. Jason and I wrapping it up when we get back. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two Platinum Eagles. Listen, we've had a nice about a sixty dollar pullback in, in Platinum. Jump in here, uh, Platinum. These are backdated Platinum uh, Eagles. Thirteen thirty five. Uh, one thousand three hundred thirty-five dollars for a platinum one-ounce eagle. Uh, if you want to save a little money and buy a platinum bar, uh, save a hundred bucks an ounce. Twelve hundred thirty-five dollars. Rolls of silver quarters at two seventy. Uh, silver's up again today, uh, pushing now twenty-five sixty here. Uh, rolls of silver dimes at a hundred and thirty-five dollars. Uh, and then gold. Gold's up another $11 right now, $2,034. These $10 liberties uh, at $1,225. So there's something for everybody here today, 800 951 And there is a little caveat, right? This is until the Fed announcement. Then we'll see. It may stay. Right, if gold just, you know, the Fed comes out and gold stays at, you know, 20, 35, great. The Fed comes out with their announcement and, and gold goes to 2100, yeah, you're not getting $10 libs for, for $1,225. You're not, you know, silver goes to 26, $27, right? The, the, the quarters and the dimes, they'll cost more, uh, but we'll see how that plays out. We'll, we'll, we'll get that in what, about three hours. About three hours, we'll get that rate hike, Joe. I was, I was looking at some historical uh, slashing rates from the Fed, you know, because that's, that's when the emergency happens, right? 8%. The Fed fund rate was at 8% in July of 1990. They started cutting the rates like crazy every single month, a little bit at a time, and you get the Gulf War. Uh, you get, go to, uh, to uh, 2001, January 2001, they started cutting the rates. Then you get 9-11. Then they started cutting the rates. Uh, uh, it was, it was, you know, this, they were a little late on on the uh, the housing crash, but yeah. it was September two thousand seven. They started cutting the rates. Market crash happened, and uh, they, they they blamed, you know, uh, corrupt businessmen and this and that, you know, bad, you know. And then of course in uh, two thousand nineteen, two thousand twenty, they started lowering the rates. Two thousand nineteen, and you got the COVID pandemic, the war against a virus, Joe, as you said, war. So. When this thing levels off, you know, and they start, they start just holding the rates where they're at. When they start to lower the rates, Joe, you just hold on to your hats because what, what do they got planned? Because things are going to get, things are bad, and things will go from bad to worse, and they got a point worse at somebody but the, but themselves. Yeah, right now uh, uh, we continue to watch the Dow is is down, but uh, well off of its lows, only down about twenty. Uh, the S&P is higher, uh, up five. The Nasdaq's up 43. Of course, Wall Street, I think, would, would love any type of extended pause, any, any mention of pause. Uh, but unfortunately, I think that's going to be pretty short lived. Uh, we had, we did get oil inventories out down again. Now, oil's been selling off because they're worried that a big, big slowdown is coming. Uh, but, uh, inventories down again and, the Fed has, well, the Biden administration has picked up the pace. Uh, they were releasing about a million barrels uh, a week from the Strategic Oil Reserve. This week they doubled it to two million. Uh, they, they're supposed to fill this thing back up. I, it, there's so much nonsense out in the markets right now. Uh, and, and pretty interesting here. I, I'll say this. We bet, <laughs> we better get a big slowdown. Otherwise oil's gonna be, uh, 120, 130, 140 a barrel at this rate. So, man, hang on to your hats, guys. Here, here's the good news. Jason and I are coming right back with the half empty cup. And then, of course, tomorrow we'll fill you in on what the Fed did and what it means for 
for Banks and everybody else out there. Get it put away. God bless everybody. We'll be right back. <laughs>